Let's get to Major League Baseball. Joining us on the Roman guest line is Odyssey MLB insider John Hammond. Of course, you know his work from MLB Network. He is an Odyssey insider and also baseball columnist for the New York Post. John, thanks so much for being with us. I know this is a very broad-based question, but what were your primary takeaways from opening day? Well, Bobby Witt, uh, with the winning hit for the Royals, that was certainly very exciting. Uh, uh, Beer uh, hitting the grand, game-winning grand slam against the Padres uh, closer. I guess they still haven't settled the closer situation. We thought it was going to be Taylor Rogers, who they just got, and uh, they they didn't use him, and uh, they gave up the game-winning homer after Darvish had pitched a brilliant game. And, uh, of course, the Mets win uh, Buck Showalter's debut. So a lot of good stuff in uh, on day one, a little bit hampered by the weather. More games today, and uh, we'll all be watching. I will say from a sports betting perspective, the underdogs were barking on day one of the MLB season. Five of the seven games, underdogs won. So let's look at the biggest game on the slate today, the Red Sox and the Yankees, at least from a viewing national perspective. So the Red Sox, big underdogs in this one because Garrett Cole is pitching. Do you think the Red Sox stand a chance? I will say it's one of the better lineups in all of baseball and also a rivalry. These two teams played each other pretty closely last season. So what's your read on Red Sox-Yankees? Well, I mean, Garrett Cole wants to get revenge after a rough uh, playoff outing last year. Obviously, uh, you know, the highest paid pitcher by total contract in the game, and uh, he wants to prove his worth. You know, there's some people out there still saying, let's see what the sticky stuff rules do to him. But, I mean, look, he was second in Cy Young last year when they were cracking down, so I do have faith in him. It's a home game for the Yankees. Um, I mean, these games are unpredictable. They seem to swing back and forth. One team will win four in a row. The other team will win four in a row. They are almost exactly equal, as they showed last year. Uh, the Red Sox do have a little bit of a deficit right now with sale out. That hurts them. But Evaldi, the former Yankee, has been tough on them. We're talking with MLB Network and Odyssey insider John Heyman, who is also a baseball columnist for the New York Post. Check out his work there. John, I know you mentioned Bobby Witt Jr., and I've been harping on him for a while now. Sort of caught up in the hype that is this 21-year-old wonderkin for the Royals. How good is he? Am I too caught up here because you can certainly buy into all of this hype surrounding him, or do you think he's the real deal? Yeah, absolutely real deal. I mean, he's one of these guys that comes along every, uh, you know, I don't want to say maybe decade or so, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to say he's Griffey or A-Rod. Those were like 100% can't miss Hall of Fame caliber but I would say it's comparable to when Chipper Jones came up. He obviously ended up in the Hall of Fame if he has that career. Fantastic, but similar type player, uh, excellent hitter with power, who's a left side infield player. Chipper was originally a shortstop, as Bobby Witt was or has been throughout his career. And I think that's probably the best comparison, maybe that, or, I mean, Kel Ripken, I think, is kind of one on his own, but maybe that is a comparison as well, because an infielder with big power, I mean, can't say A-Rod because, you know, A-Rod, you know, steroids are not an all-time great, but uh, I would say he's definitely going to be a star. I think we'll all be shocked if he's not. So looking at the Twins today, they've got a prospect on the mound starting opening day. It's rookie Joe Ryan making the start for the Twins. And when this line opened, the Twins were favored. And I thought to myself, we've got Robbie Ray on the other side. This guy won a Cy Young last year. What am I not seeing, especially with this Mariners team that looks like they're trying to win this season? Do you think the Mariners have a shot today against the Twins? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm known as the biggest Mariners detractor, fair or not. The fans are always all over me. I never believe in them, and last year I was wrong. They came close to making the playoffs. This year I have them as a playoff team. I'm kind of with you on this one now. Obviously, Minnesota's got the home field. Uh, they certainly have a very strong offense. There's a lot of excitement around Correa's debut for the Twins. Maybe that feeds into it, but I, I, I certainly can't blame you for seeing it that way. Uh, the starting pitcher is a huge factor in the games, of course. Maybe not quite the factor because we're right at the beginning of the season, and nobody except for Max Scherzer you know, threw seven innings to this point and is going to be able to go very long into the game. That said, Seattle does have a good bullpen, too, so... Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Minnesota's favored, but I think it's being at home and the excitement about Correa, maybe that does it. 
John, you mentioned Max Scherzer, who will make his Mets debut today against my Nationals. What do you expect out of Max? And are you a little worried about the Mets because of their injury concerns, which seem to always be a concern? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we people thought that the Wilpons were jinxed, but, you know, the jinx has continued in terms of the injuries. Very worrisome with DeGrom. Not worried about Scherzer. He's had these am- hamstring things before. He says he's good to go. He knows himself. So I expect a lot from him. And, you know, he did throw six innings, was ready to go seven innings in spring training. And, uh, you know, he's going to certainly be fired up. He's always fired up at having that crowd. They gave him a huge ovation yesterday at the Nats Park, as you guys know. And uh, I expect a, a very strong performance uh, from him, and uh, I expect all the best from him. I am worried generally about the Mets and their injuries, though. So looking at the rest of a lot of games today and over the course of the year, we got a ton of games in baseball, obviously. Which game are you most excited for today, or which storyline are you most excited to follow this year in baseball? Well, today, you know, I'm a New Yorker, so I'm certainly looking at the Yankees and Red Sox. That is quite a rivalry, a national rivalry. So uh, that certainly is a a huge deal. Um, You know, the storyline to me is all these great young players who are making their debuts. I don't know whether it's a new rule or not, but it's great to see that not only Witt, but Julio Rodriguez, we're going to see in that Seattle game, and uh, D.J. Abrams with the Padres. And Torkelson, Torque, as he's called with the uh, Tigers, the Slugger, uh, all starting opening day, all vying to win that Rookie of the Year award. And uh, I just think we have a lot of great young players, rookie players. And, of course, we still have that young, spectacular group that's been with us for a while. We're not going to see Acuna for a little while. We're not going to see Tatis for a little while. But Soto hit a home run in game one. He's amazing. And, uh, you know, I think we just have a lot of great, great young players. And I I hope we continue to gather great young fans to watch these great young players because that's certainly one of the issues in Major League Baseball. John, before we let you go, is there a team maybe flying a little bit under the radar when you talk about all the offseason prognostications that we haven't given a lot of attention to that maybe could surprise us this year? I mean, I think the Tigers, I think they're getting some attention, but I saw they were predicted to win 77 or 78 games, and I, I think they're really good. I mean, Eduardo Rodriguez, a uh, terrific pickup to pitch. He was great in the second half. Javier Baez solved the shortstop woes. I do like him. I know he's kind of polarizing, but he does some things better than anybody else. They picked up Austin Meadows, great left-handed bat. You've got uh, Chafin, who's uh, lefty in the pen that a lot of teams were after, and they have a lot of good young pitchers, Scooble, Mize, et cetera. Uh, you know, I think, and in that division, uh, I, I'm going to be surprised if they're not at least a 500 team or better. So I'm not betting. I can't bet. I don't bet. But to me, if the, if I, if I did, I would go with the Tigers because at 77, 78 wins, uh, to me, it seems obvious they're going to do better than that. He is joining us on the Roman guest line, our Odyssey and MLB insider, John Heyman. You can also check him out as baseball columnist for the New York Post, I should say. John, thank you so much for your time and enjoy the season. All right. You gave me, almost gave me the Washington Post there. Not quite, though. I know you're a Nats fan. Very nice. I, if they're interested, let me know. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm very happy at the New York Post. It's been a great two days. A great two days. <laughs> Thanks, John. We appreciate it.